Well, as some of you have pointed out, I haven't been riding with my full face helmet. And my excuse are that, well, it's kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> Actually, no. Usually when I'm riding and recording at the same time, I'm extra careful and don't ride very fast. Since even if I'm fully padded, the last thing I wanted to do is to drop all my equipment and break them. But this week, it's a little bit different since I don't really know what to expect. It is the Broadway Bomb. And if you're not familiar with it, the Broadway Bomb is a non-section longboard race straight down Broadway that has been taking place here in New York City for the last 15 years. It represents the essence of what it's like to ride in New York City. And of course, their slogan is, you could die. This week, we ride the Broadway Bomb and I'm gonna call it the first electric unicycle and skateboard road race in the world. My review of the gyro rider, wrist guard, and a giveaway, and finally, traffic safety. See, officer, I swear that was a green light when I passed it. Throw the intro. As always, if you enjoy it, like and subscribe, and I'll love you for it. So the Broadway Bomb was first organized in 2002 and as typical of the hardcore New York City riding style, it was derivative of the Central Park Longboard Race. And the organizer Ian Nicole and Fred Mahi had thought of the Central Park Race as being too tame. Why race in the pastoral safe confine of Central Park when you can fight traffic and risk getting arrested in the streets? Now if that sounds like a roaring good time, then a whole lot of longboarders would agree with you. Now despite the fact that the race had been declared illegal, unlawful, and both organizers had been forced by court order and that came from the Supreme Court of New York State to disassociate themselves from the race, the race continue to grow each year exponentially. There was already a good crowd gathered an hour before the race and you can tell everyone was super hyped. The race start at 126th Street and Riverside Drive and at 12 noon sharp with the traffic light turning red as the signal to go since well, we'll be running a whole lot of reds before the end of this race. subject to talk about in the middle of a giant illegal and unsanctioned road race now despite the fact that you'll likely see a whole lot of what appears to be utterly reckless behaviors I suspect that us New York City riders are just as if not safer than all of you rural abiding citizen elsewhere first of all New Yorker has a somewhat different relationship with traffic regulation than elsewhere in the country Pedestrians in general ignore all rules while drivers, when they are not stuck in traffic jam, drive as fast as space allows regardless of speed limit. In general, as long as you aren't acting in a dangerous manner, the NYPD is usually incredibly sensible when it comes to the selective enforcement of the rules. This being the perfect example of it, since even though this is technically an illegal event, we had EMTs on standby and a police escort, sort of. I'll go as far as saying that the apparent chaotic pattern of the typical New York street is part of the secret why this city has been so successful. To better explain why I think so, I'm going to first tell you about Hans Munderman, who is a Dutch traffic engineer, which is just about the most sensible description of a guy I can think of. All the more surprising to know that Hans was known for advocating something quite unexpected, the removal of traffic lights from intersections. That's like asking an architect to call for the removal of building from the face of this planet because after all, isn't traffic light the very basic building blocks of all traffic management systems? Not only that, by the reaction to some of the videos the New York crew have posted on Facebook, aside from their more pedestrian function of directing traffic, people also see them as a symbol of the rule of law. 
But there is a method to the apparent madness, and reason why urban planner and designer has been adopting his ideas for the past 30 years. You know those roundabouts so very popular within Europeans? That's Hans! But before then, my review of the Gyro Rider wrist guard. And finally, a giveaway. Now they just send these to me for review. However, as always, my opinion are my own. On to the review. So despite my clumsiness, I had always been attracted to extreme sports, which means I had had a lot of experience falling. So these unfortunately discontinued Harbinger glove have been a personal favor for quite some time. And you see these plastic inserts? They do an excellent job of protecting your wrist as you slam it down during a fall. And the fact that I still have a functional pair of wrists after 20 years of rollerblading, snowboarding, and now this attests to the effectiveness of this design. The gyro rider feels like an updated version of this very same design. It still has that plastic piece to protect your wrist during a fall. They also made the plastic insert a bit more contour to your palm and comfortable to wear, which is having one of my complaint against the Harbinger. The only downside being able to find is that these capacity touch fingertip never work for me for some reason. Now that you should be browsing using your smartphone while writing anyhow and that the tab is a tiny bit short nothing you couldn't figure out with um, some regular usage oh yes I'm giving a pair of size large away just comment below and make sure that you're subscribed and I'll pick a winner at Rendon but sorry I had to limit to US participant only since I do have to pay shipping <laughs> So back to our friend Hans, his unconventional idea and how it's connected to the urban personal transport revolution. Now to better explain his point, we have to look to a rather unconventional example, Vietnam. So I visited Ho Chi Minh City earlier this year. Aside from the wonderful food and the amazing architecture, one thing the city is known for is its crazy traffic pattern. There are few traffic lights and no discerning rules. On top of that, in this city of 9 million, same size as New York City, there are 8.5 million motorbikes registered on the road. Let's just say that crossing the road here is an interesting experience. But what Han saw wasn't how chaotic the scene was, but rather how well it worked. First of all, notice that I wasn't immediately ran over and killed. Without a traffic light, the driver were more alert, they had to and they drove slower, knowing that they had to leave enough safety margin to react to any unexpected situation. The thing about traffic light is that implicitly it favors the driver. Even though that in the urban environment, by far they're the minority. And by offloading some of the responsibility for safe driving onto a bunch of signals and traffic regulations, you're also giving tacit approval for people not to fully pay attention when they drive. This is why I think people from out of the town freak out when they drive here in New York City. Rules are only followed loosely and pedestrians, cyclists, and of course us PEV riders goes wherever any opening present themselves, seemingly at random. Before you complain, considering that this is only a problem because technically you're not used to having to pay full attention while you drive. You space out, you gain your autopilot mode, and you get distracted. And that is not something you can do here. I'm not saying that it isn't a more stressful experience to drive in New York City, it is. Since it requires that you fully engage with not just the act of driving, but actively negotiate with every other motorist, pedestrian, bicyclist, and e boarder all around you. The streets of New York demands that you be fully plugged in at all times, but I suspect that this is part of the driving force behind the incredible amount of vitality and energy the city has. It asks for 100% of your attention, 100% of the time. And 
I can think of no better way to have a mini mind meld with the city than to ride the Broadway bomb, which runs along the spiritual spine of New York City and cut through just about every single significant landmark there is. Columbia Campus and the quiet Upper West Side, Columbus Circle and the Grand Southwest entrance into Central Park the rush down theater district and ride through the insanity that is Times Square. Then it's Harrow Square, Madison Square Park, Union Square and finally the mad dash down the final stretch past Soho, Chinatown and then Wall Street ending at the bowl. And like all things you hear about New York behind the hardcore facade, you'll find awesome people and a relaxed and chill ride for the most part. And again, if you stay alert, wear the proper protection, watch where you're going, be hyper aware of traffic condition, and ride within the boundary of your own skill and comfort level, it is, in my opinion, perfectly safe. And on a beautiful day like this, a spectacular once-in-a-lifetime experience. But where are the electric unicycle and skateboards? Well, I knew that they would be far and ahead right from the start since I wanted to actually experience the bomb ride. I started in the back with the long border and made my way up the pack eventually to the head towards the end. But I wasn't fast enough to catch up to the e-rider so the real question is who will reign supreme in the most hardcore road race in the world? Did you have any doubt that the electric unicycle would be the fastest? Of course we won! Yeah boy, let's finish the shit! And it literally came down to a photo finish yeah, and in boy. the end we had a draw! Congrats to Vinny and NYC Tarzan, the overall winner of the 2019 Broadway Bomb, finished the 8 mile or 13 kilometer route in under 21 minutes. Once again, I wasted another 10 minutes of your life. As always, I love to hear what you think. As always, I love to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section below. And this week, the added bonus of the chance to win a pair of wrist guard. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. And hit that little bell icon to be notified whenever I post a new video. Until the next week, thank you.